into 16 and 8 bit uh, commands, uh, and those are co treated completely separately. Uh, the main problem is just to find these uh, two to the power of 16 different difference values, and this isn't that much, in fact, so we just tried a brute force approach here. And now I'll, yeah, now here's the pattern which we uh, used for finding the data. In fact, it was, as a, in, in real, it was a bit more complex, but this serves to illustrate how it actually works. So the background here is black, and this pattern has the color for which you want to find the, the difference value. And so if you go from left to right through the, this um, row, you get the differences of plus n from black to the color, minus n from the color to black, and the same again twice. And below here, you get again a difference value of n, then we get a difference value of zero because the color stays the same. And at the end, we get a step back to, of minus n uh, to c the color black. And so this is, in fact, pretty easy to find these sequences in the compressed data stream. And OK, yeah. So we try the, the approach is basically to generate this pattern for um, every color n in 16-bit on a ba black background, and you get two different bit sequences, as I mentioned. The one starts with 0, 0. Of course, all of them start with 0, 0 as the, um, the first pixel of every row is black, and the starting value is also 0. So we get the sequence for a difference of 0. Then we get two pairs of plus and minus n, and the rest is zeros, and we get plus n two zeros minus n. And when we now strip the leading two zeros and try to find the longest uh, repeating substring here, then we end up with the sequence for just plus n minus n. And this now we can compare with this sequence and find the longest common prefix. And when we also have th found this, then we get the two separate se sequences plus n and minus n. Uh, one sort of sanity check which uh, can be done here is that the two sequences should al also always be of the same length because um, the difference is equally likely to occur in positive direction as well in negative direction. Uh, we assume that this, the, the company actually analyzed images and uh, tried to find um, yeah, uh, universally suitable Huffman code, which uh, covers a, a wide range of different images, like, for example, video images, desktop backgrounds, um, window decorations, and so on. <coughs> and in such a wide sample of images, it should always, you should always have the same sequence of uh, the same uh, probability for each of those sequences. OK. So, in fact, this turned out to be easier than we thought. We automated this with a bit of shell scripting. So we had a script running in the virtual machine, which simply set, set a new desktop background after some seconds. This would generate uh, data sent by the driver to the device and uh, captured by USB mod. And that in, in order for this to be a bit faster, we just put 32 different color values in every one of those images, so 32 patterns of the sort which you saw earlier. Um, and the total running time was about four hours. This, didn't, this yielded most of the patterns, so not all of them, because um, the method doesn't work when the pattern itself is split at the boundary between two commands. If you remember, uh, every command can only generate up to 256 pixels. And depending on where the command boundary uh, is, it might just split the pattern apart. And then, of course, the string analysis doesn't work. So what we did for these values, which we couldn't capture, we just shifted the pattern by some pixels and repeated the process. And by doing this, we also got the rest of, of uh, the missing patterns. 
so it looks like some some weeks ago somebody found um, um, erroneous sequence, so it may be that there are still some some sequences which escaped our our attempts. Okay, now I'll I'm almost at the end already, and um, but I come to one interesting piece before I finish. So we have still two things which are unsolved and which I would like to invite you to also maybe give a look if you want to. So the, the first one is pretty trivial. This is that we don't have the Huffman sequences for the 8-bit mode yet. So this should be yeah, rather trivial because you just have to repeat the process with 8-bit dif uh, with colors which differ, uh, differ in the last 8 bits. Uh, the important part, however, is the compressed Huffman table. So we have a, the, the Huffman table is a binary tree which has up to 30 levels. So the longest bit sequences are 30 bits. And there are two uh, to the power of 16 leaf values, all of the difference values. And this entire tree is obviously somehow represented in the 4.5 kilobyte table which is sent to the device. And this, so the tree doesn't seem to have any obvious structure, but uh, somehow it's still represented in there. So, yeah, here we have some sample entries. Uh, the structure seems to look like we have 512 records, each of which has nine bytes. Um, this is particularly evident in the last uh, maybe 135 or so entries, which look like they are empty, uh, and they all have this structure. And um, here's also s some sample entries which look like they correspond to these two uh, leaf node values. So they have, both of them have a bit depth or a bit length for the code of six bits. So these are pretty uh, uh, often occurring differences. And you can see, for example, this is 2113, this is 2081. And it m looks like this record somehow contains pointers to the leaf values and these maybe contain the bit depth. But exactly how these are interrelated, we haven't yet figured out. So this is, um, of course, not strictly necessary to operate the device because um, we do know the Huffman table, we can keep it in memory. It's just about around 320 um, kilobytes. However, for a driver, for example, for a kernel driver, it would still be nice to have um, the compressed version, which is uncompressed on the fly. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm already at the end of my talk, a bit faster than expected. So, I'd like to thank some people. Of, first of all, Roberto Dioris, Markus Glocker, Sven Killig, and other people who were actually brave enough to use this stuff on their display length devices and write kernel drivers, for example, for a free BSD, for XORG, or a terminal emulator. Display Link, uh, in fact, started after at some point started donating devices to us, though they, so they also deserve a thank you. Um, their acceptance of the open source stuff is still somewhat grudging, but uh, I think they have realized that it's here to stay. Um, also, many thanks to my co-author Chris Hodges, and yeah, to you for your attention. Thanks. <laughs> Um, as we still have quite a lot of time, are there any questions? Right. I would ask anyone who has a question to line up on the microphone back there, please. Hi there. Um, being slightly dumb, I didn't get the idea of the Huffman table. You said there's four and a half K and this gets sent by the driver to the device. Exactly. So this is, yeah, four, four and a half K. Mm -hmm. And uh, it somehow, can, so this Huffman table can be obviously uh, sent dynamically by the driver. It's always the same, but they have the option to set a dynamic one. And it somehow contains the instructions for the device on how to decode the Huffman values again into raw binary data and yeah so 
Ähm, 